Remember I said there was a lot of uh, hemp in Kentucky. It was the number one hemp producing state in early America. And in that state was a guy who later became to be called the bluegrass craftsman because he wrote a lot of letters to his daughter when he was in his 70s about the early days in Kentucky, describing early, early life as a Kentucky papermaker. Well, there's so few actual craftspeople that write about what they do. If somebody wanted to study papermaking, they'd be a scholar. And they may do a pretty good job, but it's rare to have such a complete record of uh, papermaking from a papermaker. But it's all in the form of these letters to his daughter that were saved. And then those found their way to a paper historian. And he read through it and he said, this is the most complete account of early 19th century papermaking. In other words, early 1800s papermaking in Kentucky. So that's exciting to me, but I don't know how exciting it is to other people. But the neat thing about it is what did he make his paper out of? Hemp. Because there were lots of slaves in Kentucky where he was. And he found out that the slaves got the tow. T-O-W. Tow is a short fiber. After you comb the long fiber, you end up with a lot of long fiber, but also you end up with a lot of short fiber that breaks off and gets caught in the combs. And that was called tow. Now you may have heard of tow-headed. That comes from that. Towel. T-O-W. Towel. Towel comes from tow because towels were often made with sort of lower quality fiber, shorter fiber, sometimes with a lot of stock in it. That's where our early towels came from. And the slaves got the tow as sort of pay. Now, we haven't heard about slaves getting paid much, but they got the tow to do with what they wanted. And according to the bluegrass craftsman, he said that they much preferred uh, their own clothes being made out of hemp. So they made their own hemp clothing. They had access to a lot of cotton and cotton material, but that cost money, plus the hemp was much more durable than the cotton cloth. And he said that in his book. Well, it's not, a, it's not his book. It is his book now. This is letters, remember, that were gone through and made into a book. There's a story about him finally owning his own paper mill. It was the very first mill in Kentucky and it had got, turned into a hog sty and it was 15 years old since anybody had made paper. Everything was rotten. He got it all fixed up and the guy gave it to him on credit. So this was his chance to work for himself. And he got it all done and he didn't have any fiber. He's totally broke. His wife is crying. They moved somewhere. He hauled his dad with him, who was also a paper maker, but he was pretty uh, old by then. But he managed to spend his last two dollars to make a new brass woven screen for the paper screen. So where was he going to get the fiber? He said, I know where the fiber is. I'll tear apart the walls and the ceilings and get 50 pounds of rat's nests of hemp fiber. This is a true story, by the way. 50 pounds of, have you ever seen a rat's nest? 50 pounds of rat's nest he made into two reams of paper and took it to Lexington and sold it. And he came back with things that the slaves would want and he traded them 
uh, material, candy, sugar, coffee, whatever they wanted for their hemp fiber, and that's what he made his paper out of. And he became the paper maker for the Kentucky State Printer. He said he made all the paper for the Kentucky State Printer. And I have seen his paper, and it's made out of hemp fiber. And that was a nice thrill to see that.